Hi there, my name is Peter Burrett, and I'm here to present on the management of potato leaf hopper in alfalfa stands. Here we have a little introduction on potato leaf hopper. Cornell University considers it one of the most damaging pests to potato leaf hopper, uh, excuse me, pests to alfalfa in New York State. Uh, its presence, it being the little bug on the top right there, that's a very zoomed in photo I took myself. Uh, its presence is indicated by uh, a yellow V, a yellowing on your alfalfa plant, also known as hopper burn, that you can see on the bottom right. Uh, this hopper burn is produced by, well, when the potato leaf hopper feeds on the plant. And uh, when it feeds, it secretes a toxin from its mouth that uh, flows into the vascular system and uh, produces this yellowing and stunts the, stunts the plant and keeps it from photosynthesizing. Uh, these bugs are able to fly and jump from plant to plant, and we'll, uh, we'll get to that a little bit later. So the feeding techniques of potato leafhopper, uh, they're not like a chewing organism. They rather use a stylet to suck uh, the photosynthate um, and the crude protein out of the plant. Uh, and they do this by sucking on the underside of the leaf, because it's just better access with stomata there, and just much easier access overall than the top side of the leaf. Um, so their feeding patterns, they come up from the Gulf Coast, uh, they cannot overwinter in New York State, and um, they'll come up around mid-May uh, to late June, and it's very difficult to predict when they actually will come up in that range. It really depends on the year uh, and the climate of each year, and we just don't have the resources right now to estimate beforehand whether or not it's going to be a good or bad year in terms of uh, the numbers for potato leafhopper and alfalfa. Uh, the life cycle from nymph on the bottom right to uh, adult on the top right, uh, it takes about one month to complete this cycle, and there is generational overlap. So as the adult lays their eggs on the underside of the leaf of the alfalfa, um, it'll take about seven to ten days, and the nymphs will come out. And once you see those, it's going to be a problem because you see a lot of uh, nymphs are produced from each generation. Um, and these generations uh, take about or excuse me, you'll see about three to four generations per year. Um, so a lot of leafhoppers can come through your alfalfa stands and very quickly too. So you have to have a handle on it. And how do you have a handle on it? You need to do scouting. Uh, here's an excellent graph provided by Cornell University on how to estimate the number of potato leafhoppers to the height of your stand and what's gonna be too much um, in your field. So we see on the left side here, uh, the average stem length of your alfalfa plant. So the first thing you want to do when you get out in your field, and this should be on a weekly basis, you have to be doing this constantly, you want to measure the height of your alfalfa, and depending on the, the, uh, the height, uh, you have different thresholds, the amount of leaf hoppers you can have before you uh, afford yourself the liberty to take action against those pests. So let's say you have an 8 to 10 inch stand of alfalfa. If you go out like the guy on the right there is with your sweep net and you sweep uh, one, two, three, each sweep, you get one leaf hopper. Um, that means you're at the economic point of injury to your alfalfa. So you have that liberty to go out and maybe apply a pesticide or even decide to cut, even though this would be a little bit too short. It could be a management strategy. You can use it. It's up to the farmer. Uh, and this also applies for any stage, if you're at that two leaf hopper uh, per sweet mark and you're at 13 inch alfalfa or above that two leaf hopper per sweep, which is very common, um, you can spray if you'd like to or take the risk and um, hopefully the populations and the damage won't get too high in your alfalfa. So that's very important to get a handle on potato leaf hopper. And there are patterns of feeding and damage in your alfalfa fields, fields are very unpredictable and sometimes they just don't make sense. If you see um, there's no yellowing, but there's a ton of leaf hoppers in your field, um, that's possible. So you need to get out there. You can't just look at the signs, look at the color. You need to get out, out there with a sweep net and actually look at it yourself. Analyze the data for yourself and use those um, that injury analysis provided by Cornell University in that chart. Uh, so your proactive strategies for damage control, like I said, weekly scouting, early detection is super important, planting fields away from each other. In the second slide of this presentation, I said that they can fly and jump. They are not limited to one plant. When they feed on one plant and they say, oh, I'm done with this one, 
they'll happily go to another one and even to another field. So when you end up maybe cutting or applying a pesticide, they're going to run from that field and they're going to go to more food. So you need to be prepared for them to move. And separating your fields is a great strategy in preventing damage to all of your fields. So I think the best strategy to prevention of damage from the leaf hoppers is, is planting a resistant cultivar of alfalfa. Uh, these resistant cultivars use physical barriers against the uh, the bugs, so they cannot the bugs cannot produce a resistance to um, like a gene um, a gene defense that the alfalfa could use. So uh, reactive strategies uh, at the point when the uh, potato leaf hopper has become too much above that threshold. Uh, cutting the stand is the only option that organic growers have to saving their uh, their alfalfa and their dollar. Um, and this can be handy, uh, but it's not always a great solution. You might just have to let the uh, the potato leaf hoppers run their course and do damage to the alfalfa, which sucks. For non-organic growers, conventional growers, you can use pesticide applications, but this is really spotty. Using these pesticides, they are non-residual, so they're, they're not going to stick through the system. So that means that once you apply, uh, within a week, week and a half, you're going to see more leaf hoppers coming back in big numbers. They come back very fast. So you have to get the application right. If you apply too early, those leaf hoppers are going to come back. If you apply too late, then you're just throwing money into the water and it's just not worth it. Um, they've already done their damage if you see that heavy yellowing or even reddish to purple yellowing. So you have to get it just right, right in the middle, and you have to have the guts to actually spray if you're going to spray. Uh, spraying too late, it's just not worth it, and you're just losing money at that point. So that is um, it for my presentation on management of uh, potato leaf hopper. These are the those are the steps you need to take, uh, or the strategies you can take to prevent your field from becoming ravaged by these pests. So uh, I'll leave you with an image on the top right here of a treated and untreated field. On the left side we have an untreated field. On the right side we have a treated field. On the treated field, you see that it's a much more lush and even canopy um, because it's been treated at the right time. If you treat it too early, like I said, they're going to come back and you're going to see close to what you see on the untreated side. So you can see from that image that uh, pesticide applications do work. They just have to be used right, just like any management strategy for anything in life. And it's important to have a handle on these bugs because this is your life. These fields are your money that's going to feed your family. So uh, it's important to um, take what I say and hopefully learn from it and develop your own strategies down the road as we learn more. So I thank you for listening um, and good luck in the next growing season. Thank you.